is breaking news. The general election is one month away, and like a Pop-Tart you forgot to take out of the foil before putting it into the microwave, things are heating up fast. Maybe too fast. If you're worried about the fate of this country, there's one enormous thing that you can do to have an impact. Vote. I could go through all the stats, but we all know that young people just don't vote as much as old people. To which I say, fuck you, old people. Get your own country. <laughs> you don't watch NBC because Lester Holt is too gangsta for you. You aren't allowed to choose which flavor of jelly you get at lunch. Why would you be able to choose the next president? <laughs> but for the young people watching, here's the deal. You have to vote. It is so easy that even John Lair, the actor from Geico's Even a Caveman Can Do It commercials, can do it. <laughs> and to prove it, I'm going to register to vote right now while I host the show. Now, if you're wondering if it's too late to register, it probably isn't. We've checked every state's deadlines, and the earliest ones are October 8th. Now, I've just got an email from my mom asking what type of hummus we should get for Thanksgiving, and I'm going to reply to her that she should get Cedar's Garlic Lover's Hummus, obviously, while I input my driver's license numbers. Now, you can register in every state, and since I'm from Connecticut, home of Kevin Bacon, Michael J. Fox, and 2.7 million other white people, I'm going to register there. You can register to vote in the state you go to school, but if you go to school in Massachusetts, like me, your vote is more powerful in Nickelodeon's Kids Pick the President election. <laughs> Actually, I regret saying that. Yes, I've been waiting to reference Nickelodeon's Kids Pick the President for weeks now, but I shouldn't imply that anyone's vote is worthless. I'm sure we all have a roommate named Chance who says dumb shit like, your vote doesn't matter. Also, I tried to wax my scrotum using super glue and now my dingling hurts. <laughs> well, Chance, here's what I have to say to you. Put some ice on it and go see a doctor. But also, you're wrong. My vote does matter and here's why. If you've breathed in and then out and then in again at any time recently, you've formed some kind of opinion on this election. It would be hard not to. There's never been a clearer distinction between two presidential candidates in American history. On one hand, you have a public figure who's been in the ethos for decades, plagued by scandal after scandal, who is extremely unpopular with the American people. On the other hand, you have a public figure who's been in the ethos for decades, plagued by scandal after scandal, who is extremely unpopular with the American people and is a racist. <laughs> Around now, your roommate Chance is probably like, look, I agree that the stakes are high, but my vote still won't make a difference. Also, I tried to remove the super glue with rubbing alcohol, and now everything looks and feels like fire. <laughs> Chance, you are a hazard to your own health. But here's the deal. You've earned the right to say that you've had an opinion on this election by voting. Your words, your Facebook posts, your surprisingly political Tinder bio, they all mean nothing. Voting is our primary interaction with the political process of this country. If you feel strongly about the direction of this nation, you must vote. Because whether or not you do, your grandparents will. And do you really want them to have the loudest voice in this election? They still call Jimmy Carter and Nancy regularly. <laughs> if we, as young people, want to be a part of the national dialogue, we need to start by making our opinions tangible. Over the past few minutes, I registered to vote. I did it. That's it. If you don't vote and Donald Trump, the most dangerous presidential candidate since Aaron Duel Me Bro Burr wins, <laughs> you'll have done a disservice to this country and to yourself. When we vote, we aren't just deciding on a president, we're deciding on the standard for the next four years. We're announcing to the world which percentage of young people care enough to vote about the state of our nation by just filling out a three minute form. So to everyone watching, even you Chance, please vote. It's easy, it's fast, and it's important. All right. I know that was a lot to start off our show with, and in a minute I need to read a bunch of very funny jokes. So to reset, let's all take a look at this video of a child playing trumpet and then moonwalking off stage. <laughs> the news. Famous comedian, actor, and talk show host Whoopi Goldberg died this week at the age of 60. Now, that's not true, but what if it was? That'd be pretty sad. 
A man in Montana was attacked by a grizzly bear twice in one day, forcing him to reconsider his twice daily routine of calling grizzly bears pussies. <laughs> Donald Trump's former campaign manager recommended Trump sue the New York Times into oblivion for releasing his 1995 tax returns. Said oblivion, press is dead anyway. <laughs> A train in New Jersey crashed into Hoboken Terminal last week, killing one and injuring 100 others. The conductor of the train says that he doesn't remember the accident occurring. He has since begun to retrace his steps through the crazy night with the help of his three groomsmen. <laughs> in an interview recently, Rudy Giuliani called Trump, Donald Trump a genius for avoiding paying taxes for 18 years. In the same interview, Giuliani went on to call the Hamburglar a mastermind. <laughs> UK politician Boris Johnson of Brexit fame referred to Africa as, quote, that country recently. This isn't the first embarrassing gaffe for Johnson, who has also confused himself as important. <laughs> Kanye West stopped his show after Kim Kardashian was held at gunpoint in Paris. Also, I have $10 million of jewelry for sale. <laughs> Two-month-long undercover drug operation where an officer was at a, working at a Burger King netted only five grams of marijuana and two pills. So basically, they walked into a Burger King one time. <laughs> spider bit an Australian man on a penis again. When asked to comment, the spider said, mm, I guess it's not just a phase anymore. <laughs> In an MSNBC town hall, libertarian candidate Gary Johnson was unable to name a foreign leader whom he admired. Johnson became visibly flustered before mumbling, uh, Corey in the house? <laughs> Bill Clinton told supporters that Hillary is the candidate of change. She even changed her mind about me. She didn't want to date me at first. I followed her. Night and day said, date me, Hill, date me. One night, I bought her a thousand roses and a cheeseburger and said, now we're married. <laughs> and that's the news. <laughs> We move now to the presidential election. Those on the right have accused Hillary Clinton of being too sick to campaign, with some even claiming that she's using a body double. Here to comment is the woman herself, Hillary Clinton. Hey, 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 yowza. Uh, excuse me, you are not Secretary Clinton. Oh, Who are you? No, I'm sorry, I'm not your girl Hillary. I'm her body double, Susan Crimpton. Wait, 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 so Hillary does actually have a body double? <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> of course, Michael, have you seen the amount of work she does? The meetings, the research, the speeches? No one can do that by themselves. Not even me, Susan Crimpton. Wow, um, I guess I'm just surprised that the conspiracy theories are true, then. It's not a big deal all politicians have body doubles. So everyone, even Trump, then? Yes, I'm surprised people haven't noticed. His body double is three toddlers in a suit. Oh. <laughs> That actually makes a lot of sense. Trump isn't a genuinely horrible 70-year-old man spouting hateful nonsense to a base of millions who sympathize with him. It's really just several children who don't have filters. Well, it's... Like when he told his supporters that Hillary, um, to shoot Hillary, or when he made fun of Ted Cruz's wife for her appearance, or when he said that climate change was invented by a bunch of random... No, no, those were all the real Donald. All of those? Are the toddlers doing anything then? Of course, when Donald Trump appeared in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, that was actually the aforementioned children. <laughs> Sounds like the kids get to do all the fun work then. You have no idea how much I envy Rod, Brian, and Garrett. Oh, I wish Hillary were as laid back as Trump. <coughs> 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 Are you okay? Do you need water oh, or... Oh, no, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm trying to keep up appearances, you know, healthy appearances. Um, are you saying that Hillary isn't sick? No way, just me. <laughs> the media's been having a field day playing, up her, playing her up as some frail old woman, but if people knew how healthy she really was, they'd be terrified. It is scary. That's good to know. Michael, it's frightening. <laughs> okay, well, um, now... Uh, I just really need to ask, how are you Hillary's body double? You look nothing like her. All right, let me break this down for you in terms that you can understand. You know that scene in the Santa Claus where Tim Allen keeps shaving his beard, but he looks in the mirror and then it grows back? Yes. That's basically what happens to me when I fill in for her. It's sort of a magical transformation type situation. All doubles go through that. Uh, so you said 
all doubles, uh, do you all know each other? I mean, is that okay to ask? Or? Yes, that would be offensive if it weren't true. We do all know each other as we all belong to the Alterplex Society, a dark, ancient organization for those who devote their lives to the art of body replication. It's also a club for people with seven to nine toes. That is fascinating. Well, also mildly disturbing, but uh, any, uh, what's the news going on with the Alterplex Society right now? You uh, looking for some double gossip? Uh, I sure am. <laughs> well, get this. <laughs> Ted Cruz's double recently took over for him full time because Ted Cruz, get this, melted. <laughs> that actually does not surprise me it at all. It was like butter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what about uh, Jeb's double? Fozzie Bear. Fozzie Bear, the Muppet? Yes, sir. So does that mean all Muppets are real too? No, just Fozzie Bear. Come on, Michael, they're puppets. <sighs> so I guess your reason for coming on the show then was to clear up Hillary's health? No, Michael, I also would like to announce that I, Susan Crimpton, Hillary Clinton's body double, am officially endorsing, endorsing Gary Johnson for president. Uh, you don't want Hillary to win? There is no way I can keep this up for eight more years. Michael, I'm dying. Hillary's double, everyone. <laughs> Folks, if you're getting peckish like me around this time in the show, uh, fortunately, there's a commercial break coming up, so you could get around, rustle up in your pantry, and take a whiz without missing anything worthwhile. We'll be right back. <laughs> Introducing the stars of Emerson's number one morning show. This is Medina Shahi. She breaks the latest pop culture news. She also recently broke the bench press world record in Germany, twice. Genetics. This is Chloe Tebow, always the first to break the hard hitting news on the local and national scale. Also always the first person to pop up on your Tinder account. I love meeting new people. This is Malcolm Kellner, Minnesota native and sports extraordinaire. It's true. He was the second choice for the reporter position. Our first took a job at EIV. This is Sean Stackhouse, one of the two dynamic hosts leading the charge of the show. He will say literally anything that is on the prompter. And I'm Lauren Fox. This is the real Lauren Fox. She thought she would be hosting Good Morning Emerson alone. She claims there is no ill will between her and the producers. This is Noah. He's lighting. Welcome back. It can be hard to predict who will be the next president. Even professional pollsters often get it wrong. That's why we've sent out our field reporter, Pablo Escobosa, to take the pulse of the nation. Hey guys, this is Pablo Escobosa, and we are out here at Faneuil Hall asking people what they think about the election. If you were to pick, which candidate do you think would best protect us in the event of an alien invasion? Gary Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump released the line of Make America Great Again tinfoil hats. Do you think that's stylish? Or do you think that's suspicious? I mean, they're snapbacks, so people will... <laughs> that's true. That's true, they are snapbacks. Snapback. Yeah, as long as they're snapbacks, that's still pretty fresh. Just, can I ask you a question just real quick? Uh, my English is not so well, so... <laughs> <laughs> do you, oh, that's okay. Do you know, uh, you know the two candidates running for president right now? Yeah, Clinton and, and Trump. Okay, uh, which one do you think might be an alien? An alien? Yeah. Trump? Not like the way Donald Trump uses it. I mean like a distinct, like from not a, the Earth alien. Yeah. I would say Donald Trump is the alien. That guy's crazy. Do you have reasons, do you have findings to back that up? I think mostly like facial expressions and tiny hands. Like that's not entirely human, right? I also think it's Donald Trump because he never provided his birth certificate, right? So we don't even know if he was born here. That is a very good point that no one has brought up. We don't have Donald Trump's birth certificate. There is an incident in New Mexico in 1947 called the Roswell Incident where a spacecraft touched down in a cornfield and was collected by the United States government. And you know who else was born in 1947? Hillary? Take a guess. Hillary, Hillary Clinton? Clinton? Yes, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was born in 1947. Hillary Clinton? Alien? Maybe. 
Any alien things really resonate with you? Any like theories, any conspiracy theories or anything like that? Oh, ancient aliens. It's a good show. It's a good show, right? What's going on at Puma Punku? Why are all those shapes so perfectly shaped? No one knows. A lot of people believe that a lot of ancient cultures had access to nuclear technology. To radi there was a lot of radioactive like burial grounds and stuff. And people think that aliens came to Earth and they changed us. And they're using us as puppets. Reptilians, the ones that shapeshift, maybe the tall grays or like the beautiful blonde ones, or maybe the creepy like big prey mantis ones. Wait, if you had to pick a candidate that you thought for sure might be an alien, which one would you go for? I don't believe in aliens. Interesting. Interesting. So you don't subscribe to the algorithm that states that the statistical probability of there being life on other planets is definite? That there actually are? Well, I just, I need... Which candidate do you think would most likely be uh, a alien from another planet? You don't have... Not a... <laughs> Not a pick, not a pick. She didn't have a single, she didn't have a single person. And I think that's a little crazy because if you ask me, uh, Trump is a reptilian. Well, we came, we saw, we informed people, and that's probably about the best we can do. So uh, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks again to Pablo Escobosa for that fine, fine reporting. In the news, Donald Trump's aggressive attacks on political enemies and minority groups has caused a rise in bullying. Here to discuss this issue is Trump supporter Susie Tompkins. Thanks for having me. Whoa. Are you Michael Kayanis? Um, no, no. The Michael Kayanis. Remember me, Susie, from elementary school? I bullied you. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> yes, I remember. Oh, this is so exciting. I, could, I finally get to break out all the inset, oh, insults I've been saving up. I made a Google Doc. Oh, man, remember that time? This is a news show, Susie. You run a news show? With that tie? What, did your mom tie it for you? <laughs> that was for if I ever saw you wearing a tie. <laughs> we brought you on this show to talk about Trump. God bless him. The angel. He changed the game. He's our MJ. You're Michael Jackson? <laughs> no, Michael Jordan, Yarsi Wang fart. So you admit that he's caused a rise in bullying? Um, he didn't just cause a rise. He reinvented the art. I don't think being mean to people is necessarily an art. Of course you would think that, you tiny brain shrimp. You don't know how much work I put into making you cry every gym class. It was not every gym class. Mm, before Trump, bullies called you fart something, dunked you in the toilet, and called it a day. Trump, though? He's on a whole new level. In what way? He targets everyone. Fat people, minorities, women, there's no limit. And that's good? Uh, fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> Bullies used to just pick on the kid with the glasses or the horse girl. You were both of those, weren't you, Michael? <laughs> no. Well, maybe, but why is Trump bullying everyone a good thing? Uh, we're in the bully renaissance right now, and Trump is our biff from Back to the Future. He's bigger than Jimmy the Nuts, Lawrence. Who? <laughs> Only the record holder for the most tea bags in a day. He's a god in the bullying community. But why does Trump's bullying work so well? Good question. <clears throat> Trump very effectively uses singular adjectives to rile up his opponents. Look at these wonderful examples. Uh, crooked Hillary. Lion Ted, sad boy Jeb. <laughs> He'd have a field day with you, Michael. But why do these nicknames work so well? Mm. Glasses, Michael. Little bitch, Michael. <laughs> Still pees his pants when he laughs too hard, Michael. Hey. See, they just work. You can call me names all you want, but I am not going to dignify your bullying with a response. I'm better than that. We as a nation are better than that. We as a nation are better than that. <laughs> are we? Are we, Michael? Did you block out the time the entire t class took turns stepping on your glasses? Or the time everyone pitched in to tell you that your parents were getting divorced through skywriting? That was you guys? <laughs> That's America. We're just a nation of bullies. We didn't legalize gay marriage until last year. We voted for Sanjaya, an American Idol, just to be mean. <laughs> and finally, someone in politics speaks for us. Oh, God. 
we're screwed. Hey, don't take it badly. Bullying someone means you care about them. The only reason I picked on you in school is because I had such a crush on you. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> you look like a scarecrow that came to life. Oh. Susie Tompkins, everyone. Oh, Breaking news may just be a college television show, but we're committed to matching real TV as much as we can, even when it comes to annoying and repetitive commercials. We'll be right back. <laughs> Christian Mudrick. And I'm Maggie Morlat. And you're watching Real Reactions. On the Emerson Channel. Welcome back. Last month, Donald Trump Jr. drew controversy when he tweeted a picture of a bowl of Skittles with the caption, if I had a bowl of Skittles and I told you that just three would kill you, would you take a handful? That's our Syrian refugee problem. Here to comment on the tweet and the Syrian refugee crisis is our foreign affairs correspondent, David Stahl. Hi, Michael. When I saw Skid Skittles trending on Twitter last month, I said, finally! I thought, <laughs> I thought we were at long last having a national conversation about an issue very close to my heart. You see, in 2013, Skittles shook the nation when it altered its traditional flavor lineup by replacing lime Skittles with the vile green apple Skittle. You don't like green apple Skittles? Nobody likes green apple Skittles, Michael. They throw off the flavor profile of the entire bag. If you had a bowl of Skittles and you told me just three were green apple, I'd spit in your goddamn face. <laughs> With green apple, a bag of Skittles might as well be poisoned. Okay, um, David, are you going to talk about the Syrian refugee crisis? Oh. And then, in 2015, the Mars Corporation had the audacity to reintroduce lime to the Skittles pantheon by relegating it to the special edition Orchard Pack, where it is accompanied by four far inferior flavors. I hate Orchard Skittles. It's like a basketball team made up of Michael Jordan and four white toddlers. David, are you going to talk about Syria at all? What? Why would I do that? Because you are a foreign affairs correspondent, David. Ah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought you said foreign candy correspondent. <laughs> Why would I say that? David, Affairs and candy don't even sound similar, and Skittles are an American candy. Actually, <laughs> Skittles were first introduced in the United Kingdom in 1974. The North American market didn't receive the gift of Skittles until 1979, or as I call it, zero year. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm going to regret this, but what is zero year? Well, I divide time into two periods, AS and BS, after Skittles, and bullshit. David, <laughs> this is a news show, and I brought you here to talk about the problem in Syria, and that is what you are going to do. Fine. Why would refugees want to come here when there are no line Skittles? This is not the America I know. No longer is this the land of the free. David. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? I, I had a whole demonstration planned. 
fine. So. <laughs> Each time I feel the need to taste the rainbow, and it is a need, I have no choice but to purchase a bag of Orchard Skittles in addition to a bag of the original Skittles, the name of which, by the way, is a blatant lie. <laughs> then, I pour both bags into two separate bowls. Yeah? Listen to that sound. <laughs> I remove the green apple Skittles and I throw them in the garbage, where they belong. And then I take the refugee lime skittles from the orchard bowl and put them back into the original bowl, restoring them to their rightful place. So you eat them from that bowl? No, 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 no. I then pour the new lime skittles back into the bag so as to create the illusion of a true package of original skittles. And what do you do with the rest of the orchard skittles then? It does not matter. Well, now that you've found your solution... Not quite, Michael. <laughs> I love Skittles. The Mars Corporation announced that in 2017, they will be discontinuing Orchard Skittles, leaving me and millions of other hardworking Americans without our lime Skittles. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks, Michael, but all hope isn't lost. With crises such as these, it can feel like it's impossible to have your voice heard. But there's still one way we can all have an impact. Voting? No, Michael. You bespectacled fool. <laughs> I'm talking, of course, about online petitions. You see, we... The American people... <laughs> have let Big Candy bully us for too long. We've had to deal with discontinued flavors, rising prices, and hollow malted milk balls. But the buck stops here. We must band together and show the Mars Corporation that we will not be subjugated anymore. We must declare loudly in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive and we're going to make Skittles great again. Go to makeskittlesgreatagain.com. That's a real website that we paid money for. And sign my petition to bring back Lime Skittles. Thank you and God bless Skittles. David Stahl, everyone. That's our show, folks. Don't forget to register to vote. You can find everything you need to do so at vote.gov. And be sure to tune in on November 8th for Breaking News' live election coverage. It's going to be a night to remember, or, depending on how much you drink, a night to forget. Before we go, I want to try something out. I mean, I know I don't have a voice that many people would describe as classically sexy, but I've always wanted to be a late-night DJ, and this is my best shot. <clears throat> You're listening to Breaking News Radio, and you're looking just as beautiful as the day we met. This is Mikey K spinning the late night records and waxing poetic as we journey forth towards dawn. You know, nothing gets me quite as hot as some breaking news. Nothing that is but you. I enjoyed our time together tonight, but the sun is beginning its ascent into the horizon. And that means I have to say goodbye for now. From all of us here at Breaking News, but especially from me, I'm glad I don't know how to quit you. Good night, everyone. Woo!